Good morning and welcome to Jasiri. It's the middle of the week and you know what they say. Wednesdays are for dreaming about the weekend and making plans to conquer the rest of the week. I just call it the hump day. Anyway, I'm on that train ride as well and I don't know if my colleagues here are on that same train. Lolo? Well, that's like saying Wednesdays are for witch hunts and you know, I wouldn't know much about that. Catherine is very at home with that topic. You know where she's from. Here we go again. Here we go. Well, give Lolo, why now? You're doing exactly what you've been, what you've characterized me of. Listen, the viewers are watching and they're on my side. How do we know are that? They, are, we, are they really? Do How they know do where know you're that? from? Because you are a hybrid human, uh, half Nigerian, half foreigner. You don't belong here. We need to have a seance. Um, no, I think now is the time where um, <laughs> we should call um, Diola. In the studio. No, 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 you just say it as it comes, and then you, you can translate it. You know what I think happens to Catherine? Hmm. She's actually thinking in French. Yes. Right? They're translating it to English. <laughs> yes. She says it, and you're like, OK. Then, uh, yes. But a yes. lot of French-speaking people actually do that. You it's know, when you have two Spanish. languages or no, three. No, I felt Spanish. That was the note they sent home. Wow. My teacher was like, what's her problem? <laughs> that I think she's translating to Yoruba before she translates to English, before yeah. she translates to Spanish. Mm. And therefore, I felt Spanish. All Sorry. I can tell you is, hola, como esta? Estoy bien? Uh, which is uh, Try. And I did know some. Yeah. Actually, knew some French words. Yes, I know. S'il vous plaît. S'il vous plaît. Merci. Merci. Au revoir. Encore. Uh, Répétez. Is it encore? <laughs> encore. Encore. With what the is? English pronunciation. Encore. Repeat. Stop doing your math. Uh, that's that's how they talk okay, no more, no more, no more. Let's stop that. Let's <laughs> save some of this energy for the upcoming topics and conversations we'll be starting and having right here on Just Siri One. <laughs> Let's start with. I like that laugh because I've been a victim of these people. And those are Okada riders or motorcyclists or Okada as we generally call them. Now, Lagos State has announced that it is renewing its campaign against motorcycles, popularly referred to as Okada operating restricted routes within the state. But, Tolu, I actually thought they were banned. Okay, they were banned at the time. They are re-banned again in like 2022. Mm -hmm. But they're still so saying... So they are here again. Yeah, so they're I still think... saying they are committed to. They are committed so to... So the ban was never lifted. We have the Lagos the State traffic law, mm -hmm. which came in, in fact, during uh, Fashola's yeah. last time. It was never lifted. It was just simply the enforcement of the law. Of the law. Was, yes. So it became soft right. in enforcing. Because, listen, it's effective now in 10 local government mm -hmm. areas and 15 LCDAs, that's local council development areas within Lagos. And I think for me, it was one of the best decisions. And but we all know that Lagos is heavily populated. Yes. Let's not even lie. Because the traffic is another issue. Mm -hmm. A lot of people that live in the interlands, they do need these things. Because imagine if you're living in the interior of Yanokwaja mm. and you have to come out to the road, even if you want to get a BRT. Sometimes some of these places are quite, you know, far to walk. Mm -hmm. so, so it's not that the state government has completely banned them. They've restricted them. They're yeah. not supposed to be on expresses, mm. expressways, highways. They're not supposed to be on bridges. But mm. you see them on bridges. You see them on expressways. You see them going one way. They're so one of the purveyors of one-way traffic, one-way Going, and you know that they cause a lot of accidents. A lot. And now, not just Okada riders, I'm going to have to even dispatch. say dispatch yes, riders. Yes, I knew you were going They there. are terrible to Yeah, because they dispatch. come at you from both sides, yeah, 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 and yeah. you're like, this is not the, good at all. The dispatch riders believe that because um, the ban on Okadas weren't lifted, so they are now the chiefs of mm, the road. Of so, the and they, <laughs> are, they have legitimate reasons to be on mm. the roads because, you know, they're on duty. Yeah, it, so it, it's ridiculous. But and last, so, last, so we're battling Danfo, yeah. we're battling Keke. Mm -hmm. Keke. Keke cannot decide if it's a bus <laughs> or a car or, or, or a car. Okada. No. They, they want to act like a car and some, they, they, they want to respect is, them like a car. Yes. So Danfo, Keke, motorcycle, Okada, and now I'm also battling and when you say bus, you know you have to now but, say bus even there are many times the Korokwe, that one that is so small. That can squeeze in. Honestly, it took me a while until I entered Korokwe before I even could believe how many people can make it inside the Korokwe. I think 
three in front, no. three at the back. Wow. Yeah, and then one in front. One in front. I think those ones are easier to even handle. I you know, but they the, act like Okada too sometimes. Yes. yes. But I'm even which grateful for vehicles, this. We, which type or which category of vehicles do not act like Okadas okay. in Lagos? Yeah. Really. And I'm even, even grateful private, for the Even bar. private citizens driving on the road, sometimes they want to do mm. the James Bond move yeah. and they feel... But you know the Okada <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, know your kind of guilty party. I, I know I have yes. friends who are watching. They said, Tolu is not the one that should be no. talking about driving. <laughs> but you know, the Okada ban actually did help us because yes. um, robberies actually decreased. And then because we saw that a the, lot of people yeah. were using Okadas, you know, to perpetrate, so you know, that ways, thing. Uh, they were yeah. always. Then I know even because it came in in fashion, uh, fashion last time, he even noted almost an immediate increase in the number of accidents, uh, this type of uh, Okada accidents that were actually ending up in the hospitals as well. Yes. There's issues with unidentifiable and untraceable operators. Some people mm -hmm. come into Lagos to, to drive or ride Okada and they sleep on their Okada. They have no known no location, house. no residence. The Okada is what they use for their means of livelihood, where they sleep, they just park it and, and maybe you know, they'll pay it, small it, or something. It was a very huge security risk at the time because yeah. I know that a lot of circulation was going on that people from the north and outside Nigeria, like Niger, they were coming into the country, that you'd actually see Okada riders that don't speak a word of okay. English. But how they can't about... even communicate. They were so... It was like Did an you ever infestation. See the Did you ever see, like, young boys, yes. like, underage, also really? driving you, Okada? You, they, they are on a different level. I feel that while, you know, people just have to eke a living somewhere, I'm thinking, mm. can they be regulated somewhat stricter rather than just getting them off the road? Because, like, Lola said, there are some places in Lagos, the hinterlands, the outskirts yeah. of Lagos, that really you need these forms of transportation to find your way to the main road. I, I, and I'm thinking, instead of just taking them totally off the streets, do we have a problem? Do we really have a problem? We're, 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 not, able we're not able to track them. them. We're not able to trace them. Mm. We're not able to control them. Even if you so ask why? them, a lot of times they're supposed to have You'll see them wearing jackets, yeah. and if they enter an area outside of their normal area, they may need to settle the boys. But that is a way for us to start regulation. But I don't think Lagosians at this point even care. I feel for people. I remember when this happened, when Fashola immediately banned it. Oh, the God. crowds of people at bus stops. So it always became a conversation about yeah. whether or not governments cared enough. If government is not providing enough in terms of transportation alternatives for people, then yeah. how can you take away this, al this alternative? But this alternative was being used for robberies. Yes. It was causing accidents. accidents. It, it, it was, was just, just literally a menace on the roads. Well, sometimes, you, you can, the I know is, people can come for me for this, but you know Nigerians are kind of lazy. You if mean? you've lived abroad, yeah, uh, you find out point. that the distances between places are much more. If you live in London, between your house, at least, from a little observation, at least to walk to the train station, you take about 15 minutes. 15, 20 minutes but at time. Yeah. No, no, let's not we can't even there. walk from down no, no, the road. No, 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 listen, let's not go there. Up our street, we're already mm -mm, mm -mm. We By the time you walk from your street to the main road, yeah. dust don't cover your shoe. Well. In the abroad, breeze is blowing you. <laughs> you understand? Your body is sweet. That's a way to look at Listen, it. Listen, we cannot, no, we, we really have to move on. We, we, truly, we, we, we really have to no, move on. Every now. woman has alternative. You carry your bag with your slippers with in your it. With your slippers and your slippers. Then wear your nice shoe where you get to wear your gloves. <laughs> when you get there, clean it and be a babe. But we hope the government will be strict. We, we don't need to see every six months, Lagos is serious about it. Yeah. We're going to handle it. We need to see complete and continuous compliance and, of course, enforcement of the law. Totally. All right. Mm. So coming up after the break, um, uh, one, one of the um, biggest stories this week is the ban on styrofoam and single-use plastics in Lagos. We'll also be talking about the closure of some major markets due to sanitation violations. Mm. Our guest, Alexander Ahibe, joins us in the studio for that discourse. And later, huh, hot topics. See you in just a moment. Welcome back. If you're just tuning in to New Central TV, you are watching Jassiri. Our story this morning has got Lagos talking. The environmentalists are cheering. The marketers and traders are booing. And the rest of us say good radiance to bad rubbish. I'm talking about the recent ban on styrofoam or the distribution of styrofoam and single-use plastics in the state. The Commissioner for the Environment and Water Resources, Tokumba Wahab, said the decision was made following the menace that single-use plastics, especially the non-biodegradable styrofoam, were causing on the environment. 
Uh, I read an article recently that said Lagos is the dirtiest it has ever been since fascist administration streets are littered, especially in densely populated areas. Market conditions are abhorrent and there's constant flooding during the rainy season because our drains are clogged. So I agree with Lolo. It's good riddance to bad mm. rubbish. Well, joining the conversation now is the founder and CEO of African Cleanup Initiative, a nonprofit committed to environmental sustainability through environmental cleanup projects, education, and advocacy. Alexander Ahigbe joins us on Jassiri. Alexander, welcome to Jassiri. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me this morning. So I, for one, when I heard the news, I said, it's been a long time coming. coming. <laughs> but there are a lot of issues around it. And let's get into an understanding of why it's even a very critical decision that Lagos State has taken now. So styrofoam and single-use plastics are only two of the many bi non-biodegradable materials. There's footwear, there's fibers, there's uh, metals, toxic waste, disposable bags, and all of it. You can find it all in Lagos and in our Lagos canals as well. Can you break down how these materials impact our waste management system and even contribute to rising concerns around climate change? Okay, thank you so much uh, for that thought. And styrofoam itself is a single-use plastic. And this decision by the uh, Commission of Environment is something, like you said, should have been done virtually before now. If you notice, sometime in 2015, we had a major flood, so I think somewhere around solar. And yeah. if you check the cost of that flood, to a large extent, the, the items you will find and that uh, 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 flooding issues were majorly styrofoam issues. And then a couch. I remember the and videos. So, <laughs> yeah, and so it was more like we need to do something about it. Mm -hmm. You can't just keep watching and the whole place is litter and there's nothing to be done about it. And this issue of styrofoam is that it's just, it's the non biodegradable. Yeah. And it takes like between 20 to 500 years for this wow. to decay. For this one takeaway, as and we I'm call it. Telling wow. you. So you can imagine if we have lots of that in the environment. Where is it going to? Nowhere. It ends up causing nuisance to the water bodies, to our environment, the litters everywhere. And so something has to be done to reduce the impact on the environment. Talk about plastic pollution. Mm. Mm. So all of this is matters a lot. And to a large extent, some people will want to burn this style of phone mm -hmm. because they don't want to dispose it properly. Yeah. And when you burn, what are you doing? You're releasing greenhouse gases into the air, to the climate, causing climate change. <laughs> and so a whole lot should have been done before now. We're just doing our own now. I think uh, 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 Rwanda did that yes. in 2008. Eight years after uh, 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 Morocco did theirs, in the following year, 2017, Kenya did something about that. But we're just doing our own now. But my concern is not just about the ban, but there are certain things that should be taken into consideration before carrying out a major ban like this. This was just done on the Sunday. Mm. And, and people are like, most of the business owners I know who are aware that something is happening, they didn't even see it coming. I think it would affect the business people to a large extent. I understand all of that. But then we need to put the environment first because that's the only planet that we have. Yeah. Speaking of environment now, we all know that it's, not, it's, not, it's, not, it's no longer new. Styrofoam is difficult to recycle. It takes about 500 years to completely recycle it. Okay, so in clear terms, can you, because you keep saying, okay, the effect it has, I see your passion uh, for the environment and protecting the environment, but everything contributes ultimately to even climate change. Now, if you can help us break down how these materials impact our waste management system and contribute also to the rising concerns on climate change because whether we like it or not climate change is real and this is a contributory factor okay for i i just talked about the one that you, you, where you have to burn mm -hmm. the, all of yeah. this stuff is going to affect how the climate do, okay so that's number one number two yeah now because we don't have this is not properly uh, disposed properly people just tend to gather and virtually end up at the landfill or the mm -hmm. dump site and that's another issue on its own. Now, let's come home now. Between normal people that buys all of these things that use it to buy food and all of that, how do they dispose it? They buy and they put it in the dustbin. Yeah. The, the PSP they comes to the house. Exactly. They pack it with yeah. all of the solid waste yeah. and they take it to the land. It uh -huh. just stays there. Nothing happens to it. And if eventually some people decide to burn their own, it's going to affect the, the climate. Now, if you go to our beaches, for example, now, you will see a lot of microplastics yes. by, by the yeah. side of the beach. Yes. And lots of them are product of styrofoam. We do a lot of beach cleanup. Even this Saturday, we have a beach cleanup. Mm. And when the fishes eat some of this huh. uh, microplastic yeah, styrofoam, did. you might end up buying a fish one yeah. day. You open the fish, you want to eat, and you see some funny, funny particles called microplastics in the belly of the fish. And if you're not careful, you might even eat all of those things. It's going to affect your health. Well, it's already too late. Scientists are telling us that microplastics yeah. are entering into bottled water 
they're in our water Why? system, we, so it's already stop. present. Exactly, but we can stop it now. This is what Lagos State is trying to do. Let us stop this whole issue around styrofoam and the impact it's having on human life, having on climate change. Hmm. Okay. There's something that can be done about it. Um, okay. That's why this whole conversation around the banning is coming out. But I just wish it had been done much more okay. before now. Um, yeah. All right, at least we're moving, in, uh, we're taking a step in the right direction. Sure, sure, sure. Now that we're focusing on the ban, you know, in Nigeria, a lot of things are peculiar to us as a nation. So now who is going to be responsible for implementing this ban? Okay. And what would be the penalty to those that violate it? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, in Nigeria, you can put a law in place and the implementation is always yeah. where we fail at it. Will there be a committee to transition or does the government just expect the ban to take effect immediately? Because we have to put into context, you know, a lot of people deal in this as a business. Sure. Mm -hmm. So imagine somebody that just imported mm -hmm. sure. a whole warehouse filled of this plastic sure. and they just came out and banned sure. just this weekend. How was it packed food? So well? what would the person do? I'm going to share a story with you. Yes. When I had the ban on Sunday, Monday morning, I called a friend that is into this business. Wow. I said, call, guy, you don't hear say they don't ban mm -hmm. stuff. We're like, ah, I get plenty for my shovel. <laughs> that yeah. is it. You, you yes. can imagine that kind of feedback. I was like, no, no, no. please, you have to do something about it because Lagos State will not accept all of this going forward. And for me, I just feel that before you carry out a major activity like this, you should have a form of level of stakeholder engagement mm -hmm. that involves the producers, the, the consumers, the community people, create awareness. I would have all preferred you say, between now and this time, use we're going to use all you have, all you have yes. and tell the producers to say, collect back what you have given out. And possibly, if you will not pay back their exact amount, give a discount to a rebate. That encourages people that have it in the stores to let me take it back to where I got it from. Mm -hmm. Because the way it is that people want to be disposing it anyhow, and it will cause a whole lot of havoc within a short time. Mm -hmm. Coming to what Lolo said now, as far who takes the effect? Okay, let me take it from the angle of the uh, Commission of Environment. We have Loma. Loma is an agency under the Ministry of Environment. We have Kick Against Indiscipline in the CAI, the agency under the uh, uh, Ministry of Environment. So those two bodies are meant to come together, set up a team that will ensure that this ban is implemented to the later. But then he said, if you are found guilty, we will just come to you and warn you for the first time. Like, we will warn you. That's what he said, you mm -hmm. know, Nigeria. The second time we come back and you're like, you're not keeping to the thing, we will find you. And he didn't measure what the fine is going to look like. Yeah. Now, the third time we come and we are not keeping to all of this stuff, we will collect your, probably your license of doing business in Lagos. These are the procedures he gave, out. like, we're going to, but I don't know if that will be followed by the implementers. Because most times they might come and, and find it in your show, just pack everything, like, yeah. or, or give you a fine on the spot, no warning, yeah. no coming, all of the stuff, but then, but so I, I think we should just find a way to see how we can make it easy for the common man that is doing business now. Because it's like a shock to okay. some of them. So I, I want to follow up because a lot of reactions have come in in regards mm. to this. And someone has talked about the fact that while we want to do the right thing, oftentimes the how we do the right thing can exactly. be a problem exactly. in Nigeria. Yeah. Exactly. And so when you have something like this with immediate effect, you end up sometimes with mass non-compliance. Because somebody's going to say, I can't lose the investment that I brought in this time for, yeah. I true. must make my that's money for money back. So you end up with mass non-compliance. Then true. when you get to mass non-compliance, you get these unjustified shop rates. So you've yeah. talked about the fact that there are three steps. Yeah. But how many marketers, how many people who have this styrofoam oh, wow. know that yeah. after, there's a first warning, a second warning, and then and a third warning? warning. Exactly. So then you get unjust shop rates, which then yeah. lead you to room for bribery or got go now. <laughs> come back now. No, so you are opening an opportunity for people to still make money sure, under definitely. the table in this definitely. situation. Definitely. And then at the end result, you end up with no change. It now sort of becomes like a black market for styrofoam. Mm -hmm. So if we're looking at this, other countries did this in a phased manner. They maybe gave six months. Mm -hmm. uh, notice notice yes. and exactly. everything. And so with this immediate, immediate step that Lagos State has taken, how long do you think it's going to take for us to really see a change in the use of styrofoam in the States? Uh, to a large extent, I, I would want to say that the, the Lagos State should have a team, the M&E, the monitoring and the evaluation, evaluation team. Mm. Because it's not going to happen immediately. No. 
a whole lot of produced marketers but they have this thing in their warehouse. Yeah. And they, they will be counting their losses and their gain at the same mm -hmm. time. So you don't expect this to just happen overnight. Say in the next one month, in the next two months, you will see magic. But there's going to be a process. But how fast it's going to be, I cannot tell you. But I know it's going to be like a step at a time. But if every one of us is involved in the advocacy, which is more, what I'm more concerned about, the guy producing this thing needs to understand that what you're producing is having an effect on yes. the environment. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's what we call the extended yeah. producer responsibility. I'm producing an item. I should take responsibility for my item. They yeah. need to understand it from that. And the guy buying the thing needs to understand by the time you're selling, Ensure that the person buying from you dispose this thing properly. All of those conversations need to be carried out. Right. A lot of NGOs need to come on board, a lot of individuals, a lot of marketers, a lot of Campaign. agencies yeah. need to be on this conversation. The more the voices, the better and the faster the implementation. That's why Jasir mm. is doing what he's doing. Yeah. Jasir will always give you those conversations. <laughs> but Alexander, there's a point we all keep, I think, that many of us are missing. Okay. Lagos bans the use of styrofoam. Single use plastic. The one, the no, because it's very because styrofoam is one thing. Yeah. What are the other single use, use plastics? plastics? Are we talking about they're, pet they're, bottles? They're taking it one at a time, I get. For, they, they didn't touch the word the pet bottle. I will tell you why they touch the styrofoam because it does, does not have any economic value. Mm. Okay. The pet bottles are can be recycled, okay. can be reused to a okay. large extent. But the styrofoam, one of. So what is the other single-use plastic they're then banning? Uh, the teaspoon, they uh -huh. take away spoon as oh, well. So, okay. really? so I think a lot of it's people gone. are missing that it's not just styrofoam. Not so only styrofoam, styrofoam. Is, are we banning some plastic straws? Plastic straws, straws. plastic teaspoons wow. as well that you buy the plate, you get the plastic plastic spoon to you. Everything that's You're associated with like, styrofoam. Are you banning nylons? <laughs> <laughs> they are not touching nylon, but it's also a single use plastic. We are not it's touching. We are not touching no, the large extent for now. I'm, 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 I'm that point. You know, there are so many. There are so many things to this because they can't just come out and just make an omnibus uh, ban. Because I'm looking at so many industries like electronics. You know that half of the things that we buy, like uh, maybe radios, TVs. They actually come with styrofoam. They use it to the, protect, uh, to protect yeah, in packaging. Um, the package mm -hmm. as you're getting it mm -hmm. off these companies. And you know, so many people produce things like bottled water, sachet water, sure. and all those other things. Sure. So what is but it that? It's a ripple effect, actually. What would they now they use in yeah. its place? Banana because leaves. I'm wondering, what, what do you, you put banana across leaves. like banana leaves? <laughs> That's what you were using for your rice before styrofoam came. Really? Okay. Well, uh, so if you put your TV in it, it's a matter. That's a good question. Yeah. No. So if you put, a good word. No. It was actually, I I'm wondering that, would this so. open other opportunities sure. for mm. us? Sure. Because sure. something needs to be used to replace that. I, I know that somewhere in Africa, I've seen them use, uh, when you said banana, mm. they're not making weaves. Of banana, banana leaves. storms yeah. and leaves and things. So, do you think this is going to bring about a new growth, creativity, of innovation, industry, definitely, definitely. innovation? It's going to just a matter mm. of time. Mm -hmm. You see, that's the thing. Right. Like, In my like, head, like, I was look thinking. Look at Republic, for example. So yeah. they, they had to yeah. say, release the news yesterday. Yeah. Come with your. Your, pla your, your plastic. Welcome yes. to the <laughs> <laughs> You understand? <laughs> and, you, and you also want to look at reusable. Uh, water bottle, for example. Yeah. So buying the single use of, and you can get foil as well, plates, plates, paper plates, and all of that. I've seen uh, 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 spoons and plates made from bamboo and yes. all of that. Mm -hmm. All of those ones can decay easily, so it's fine. But this styrofoam issue is just what Lagos State is concerned about because the havoc is actually costing. You know, ah, it's huge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, okay, so this new directive to bring your own plastic or bring your yeah. own container. They will say there's a fine if you don't. They, so that how, have how, to how do you think add it to we're going to, to align with this? You know, we are not okay. very good. With, <laughs> with, you know, okay. as we are very we are very special as yeah. a people. We're yeah. stubborn. Yeah. 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 So how this is going to cause fights. Uh -huh. yeah. So look, when you go to an eatery and you have to carry your plates, it's not that like Buka style. Yeah, 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 when my friends have party, I carry plates. Don't take away anyway. So that's not him. It's not me. There's a part we call the behavior change mm -hmm. in everything we do. People yeah. need to understand there needs to be a change over time. You understand? There's a particular supermarket close to my end. If you go in to buy something from them, they don't give you a nylon bag. They will tell you if you want, you have to pay extra. extra. Mm -hmm. And that alone gradually reduces 
the amount of nylon bag that comes out from that particular store. I don't understand. So when you go to buy, you, you take your own bag. You take your own bag. You go with your own bag. Yeah. Even in the UK now. That's why they won't give you Lagos. They won't give you some. In UK, they won't even give you an island. Most stores now. So gradually, that is why a whole lot of advocacy is very, very key. And I love what you guys are doing on this. People need to know. People need to be aware that they have a part to play. The government alone cannot make this thing happen. It's all of us. Mm. putting our voices together and ensuring that the right thing is done. You understand? So it might take a while, but gradually we will, uh, we will connect. And the thing you say, is, what is, is do you have an idea? For us? <laughs> <laughs> when you say, <laughs> why? 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 If, 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 you the, know? if the government uh. opposes their hand to agencies like you on the, from the media, uh. to NGOs, uh. to different personnel, let's, let's come together as a team and put our voice out there. In less than three, six months, you see a massive change Ma because uh. everybody will be on Ooh. this subject matter. Yeah, okay. So we're still talking about environmental situations, and we'd like to look at the recent shutdown of uh, Kantagua Market and Okeafa Market in Isolo due to sanitation violations and poor waste disposal practices. Now, these are densely populated markets in densely populated areas. The fact is, there are just too many people, 24-7 activity, and our landfills are overfilling. Now, you can also say, some might say our people are dirty, that we don't, we don't take cognizance of the need to be mindful of the environment but how often is the garbage clear do we even have enough garbage trucks and waste management operations is government deprioritizing issues of public health over say a 100 million something film village mm -hmm. i need the two sorry but let's get to, so this is these are not the first two markets Definitely, that's what i want yeah. to mention it's not the first two no. last year we had mushi we had, I think, Alaba and some other ones oh, shut down. I believe yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. And for me, I think now every market is expected to have a, a, an environmental agency or unit in the market that connects with Loma because that directive is coming from Loma, mm -hmm. you understand? Mm -hmm. And that unit is meant to pay certain dues to Loma for their waste to actually be evacuated within a space of time. But then if that is one thing, are people complying to that one? That's number one. Because if you're not paying what you're expected to pay to the agency that's responsible for collecting your waste, they will not show up. And if they don't show up, what will happen? The waste will pile up. We'll pile God up. bless you, will pile up. So you understand, that's number one. And number two, you're paying and they show up at the time they're supposed they to show, show up. That's another line of thought as well. Because they, there are so many reasons why they will tell you they cannot show up. The, 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 the land fee is filled up. Yes, and there's no way to go in, you understand? Yes, so yeah. that will have an effect on you. But at the same time, the people that... We've done a lot of market cleanups in Lagos and outside Lagos. So in Latin, what I see most times whenever we do market cleanup is the people themselves, they need to have this consciousness about yeah. cleanliness. That's the but starting th point. Th yeah. This is not how Nigeria was. My parents and other people will tell you about uh, weekly cleanups. Uh, ah. That's where we had the Thursday sanitation day. That's mm -hmm. where we had the once monthly Saturday, Saturday, Saturday yeah. that became a lawsuit. Uh, even we, were young, we even had local government council called Wole yes. Wole. Exactly. They used to come and inspect even your toilet. So, so we, we were, were complaining. Not, we were not like we're this before. We were not like this before. Yes. So the people are more concerned about making the money and ignoring the environment. But you can't make the money if the environment ends up exactly. saying, I'm not no. doing it again. How some markets can even live with the field? Sometimes it's really bothers They sell me. close to these things. Yes. They, they sell on top of these on things. Top of yes. the place, on top of it. That's why I don't Everyone is concerned about making money. And I tell people the environment is God's gift to man. Mm -hmm. What you do with it is your own gift to humanity. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. my own quote. Mm -hmm. Because the way one. we do with it, deal with the environment, matters a lot. If I just concern about making money out of the environment without taking care of the environment, it's going to bounce back, garbage in, garbage, garbage out. out. But we have, so I, depending on where I am, I'm driving around Lagos, I pass through markets, sometimes on sanitation days, and I do see them bringing out their waste. Yes. One, one sanitation day a week in mass marketing mm. is not enough. Not enough. enough. They need to be cleaning up mm. every mm. Single, single day. Mm. At the end of the day, mm. put everything up. But beyond that, you also have to think about the Nigerian that's willing to shop to go to these markets okay. where you're buying food stuff, you're buying raw food, you're... How are we ourselves even putting up with this? <laughs> Sincerely speaking, uh, I don't even know which angle to look at it from. <laughs> because, because if you look at an average Nigeria, there's this, mm. this eagerness, this consciousness to buy what I need at this time, I just move. I don't care what happened to where I do my business. I don't care what happened to the environment, what I need at that part. They, they place priority more on what you want to get out of the environment. 
environment. Because the truth, is, I think the truth is, we are very, we are very busy in, in not to take away from what you're saying. I think the truth is, everyone is in a hurry, so to say, yeah, exactly. in Lagos, no. and you need to step into the market. What you want, you will go and get it mm -hmm. yourself. So, so you that's why we're hurrying into typhoid. We're hurrying into cholera. We have a cholera outbreak almost every year now. Typhoid cases are on the rise in primary and local hospitals. So we are refusing to link it to either how we manage our environment personally or even the environment around us. Mm -mm. Mm. You, see, you see, most of the time, eh, I think if I, if I have issues like this, I want to look at the head, the leader of that particular community, of that particular market. Is this somebody that's environmentally conscious? Because you can't give what you don't have. If I'm the leader of the market, and I'm not concerned about the health of the market in terms of the environment, I will do little or nothing to ensure the environment is clean. Hmm. So it is a function of the leadership of that particular market no, again. Okay. We need to also look at it. Are they seeing the environment as something that's so dear and so key to humanity that you cannot afford to joke with it? Yeah. Even if, the, if the leader perceives it, now what the Commission of Environment is doing in Lagos State now is because he's so concerned and passionate about the environment. And that's why the guy has been working ever since he came in. This guy, he gave us this news on a Sunday. Sunday. Is that not amazing? He's <laughs> <laughs> like, I've left church. Yeah, I've left church. You can't imagine. Go. 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 Alex, you know that Lagos is the epicenter <laughs> and the commercial hub in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Do you see this, you know, cascading to yeah. other states or trickling there? Do you think they'll be copying Lagos or, anytime or, or soon? No because as this as is Lagos. something we need to consider. <laughs> if Lagos bans Tyrefo, mm -hmm. that means in Ibadan. I just take my words from Lagos to Ibadan mm -hmm. and pollute yeah. Ibadan and bring exactly. it to the level Lagos is. Yeah. Do you see this, you know, going around the country? In fact, I, I got, I had, I have gotten feedback like what you just said now. They mm. ban it in Lagos. Where well, we go to the next state? Mm. Yeah. Mm. That had such happening. But I think to a large extent, it's not about the state, it's about the environment as it is, it affects everybody. Because if we, Lagos is just 15 million or more Lagosians living in Lagos, so there's need for all of this. But then I feel to a large extent, this should not just be a Lagos conversation, it should be nationwide. We should look forward to the further needs of environment coming to say that based on what Lagos have just said, if I, I think they have laws saying by 2030, thereabouts, they will, they will cut down all of this single use plastic. But Lagos State said, I mean, I know if you wait till 2030, <laughs> we need to do something, something now that's affecting us now. So other states should care to it. When we started recycling, Lagos recycling, Lagos State. Lagos have started it first. Other states have keyed into it and it's making a lot of sense. So other states can also look at it and adopt it because it's going to have a major impact, positive impact in the state as well. And before we get to the states that Rwanda was in when they started this, they will search your luggage when you're entering Rwanda and remove mm. plastic. It's mm. that bad. You cannot enter the country enter with the it. Country with it. Hold yeah. on. Wow. Let's okay. specify what yeah. kind of plastic. Single use, Single all these use nylon, plastics. all this stuff that we're talking about. You can't. Yeah. You, can you can't take it. Even the pet bottle is some stuff. And even in public, there are places for you to recycle. That's so another one. That's another part. You want to ban yes. these things, you also need to make sure yes. that people are able to recycle what yeah. is available. I think this is still within our voice on this as well, yeah. that mm. you can take the, your uh, uh, pet bottles to recycle. Recy they will collect from you and give you incentive to give. Like now we have an agency that collects bottles from Ajegule, for example. Now, mm. everybody that donates their bottles in Ajegule, we have a, a hub. We collect, we give you money, we give you... During December, we give a lot of so money like out. Putting to, yes. Okay. yes, to help them support themselves during the December. I think they love so recycling. like that will encourage people to... But the styrofoam, like I said, no economic it gotta value, go. cannot be recycled, so you just do away with it. Okay. Yeah. All right, so it's a really good conversation we've been having with Alexander Haigbe, founder, African Cleanup Initiative. And we have more conversations coming up, but when we have these environmental conversations, I always like to say, I'm sorry, I'm going to leave us with this. It's a Cree saying from an Indian tribe in, the Ameri in America, and it says, only when the last tree has died, the last river has been poisoned, and the last fish has been caught, will we realize that we cannot eat money. Mm. Lolo, take us out. Honestly, <laughs> take us out. <laughs> we'll take that another break boy. now, and when we return, just know that, Jessiri, uh, we're about to get into the real deal, and that's hot topics. So please stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're still watching Just Siri on New Central TV. Remember, you can join the live conversation across all our social media channels at New Central TV and hashtag Just Siri.
Now to our favorite segment. <laughs> Drum rolls, please. <laughs> it's hot, hot topics. <laughs> all right, so our hot topic for today is really a hard pill to swallow. Mm -hmm. I'm all for helping and showing empathy to one another, but this story is why so many people respond to random messages from friends, family, or strangers when they cry for help and then they get burnt. If you've been a victim of a scam, you will understand what I mean. Some people have seen a lot. And some people are actually coming back from a lot. God, I beg you, please. <laughs> it's too much. I mean, it, it's not, not even better. Some of us are still going through a lot. In fact, <sighs> at this point, a lot is going through, through us. us. <laughs> I have no, I, I have no comeback for that. Now, the rate of <laughs> online scams in Nigeria is not funny. Last Saturday, a video went viral of Elizabeth Oshaw sharing how she was scammed of 700,000 Naira in a matter of minutes. That ended up increasing but she's going to tell it uh, tell us all about it herself the fintech company which the money was paid to as at the time that we had spoken earlier palm pay had yet to respond but we're going to see if uh, there are updates let's get a little bit of what happened from the video hey guys so today i got scammed of 700,000 naira from someone with a palm pay account and i would just really appreciate it back god it's only january please help us all I got a message from the lady who does my hair here in America. She's been doing my hair for years. I even buy weaves from her. She asked me to send money to someone um, on her behalf. She said that her transfers weren't working. Um, that could I send 300K for her? I said yes. And so Elizabeth Oshaw joins us live now from the US and she's gonna take us through some of the updates on this because a lot of people have found themselves responding to the story because they themselves have been victims. Liz, welcome to Jassiri. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, ladies. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Now, this is so sad. Honestly, um, in the video, you mentioned your husband asking, must you always help? <laughs> I mean, I can totally relate because, you know, when your good nature is preyed on, you, you just start to blame yourself. You feel like you're the problem. So please, can you quickly take us through how that happened? Yeah, I mean, at this point, it's almost like I told you so. And, you know, from my husband's point of view, because I... I'm, I've been burnt and I almost have like empathy fatigue, you know, mm. when you have that nature of, I, I feel like I'm a Voltron, you know, in fact, that was my nickname, Voltron. People used to call me to come and fight, you know, and um, so I'm always coming to people's aid. I want to help. And I think that can make you very vulnerable when you have that sort of nature because you're easy to manipulate, you know? And whilst I don't want to look at myself as a mugu, the truth is they were able to catch me very quickly because all I needed to hear was hospital, hospital yeah. bills. And I literally started transferring. I just started transferring. You know, I, I had transferred twice, two separate transactions, 300 and 400, and was asked for 1.5 million before yeah. I clicked that I was being scammed. Yeah. Many, um, thank you so much for sharing. Uh, many of these virtual banks don't use KYC verification. You actually only require a, a mobile phone number uh, to open an account. And in case of Palm Pay, the account is untraceable. There is no accountability, no guidelines for things like this, no measures for tracking. It's just crazy, crazy and it's ridiculous. You reached out to your bank and Palm Pay. What was the feedback? So they've told me, actually, Palm Pay have reached out since I um, since the video went viral. They okay. told me that the money has been moved. The money has been moved. Um, they can't give me any further information until this becomes a court, you know, an illegal affair. Wow. And what they're asking me for now is a police report, um, which will then enable me to have a court affidavit, which then allows them to make this legal. You know, and I'm being asked to pay money for the police report. It's I wanted to ask, money. Liz, because you shared that the police are now asking you money to uh, to follow through on this case. How much are they asking for to do what is supposed to be their duty? So I'm told that right now there's a backlog of police reports re requests. It's going to take about three months if I want to get this the, wow. through the proper channels and for free. Um, I've had so many different advice. Some people are saying to me, you know, the courts in Kaduna are faster, so go through Kaduna um, and it may take four days, but I still have to pay. You know, um, you will have to give one a guje, you will have to give mm -hmm. one bribe, you know, to make things fast. And I, it's just time where we need to stand up and ask why. Why can we not have a system where things work, you know? 
And with all this fintech, we're asking for our fintech companies to come in so that they can help us uh, shrink this, uh, this divide we have, uh, to shrink this uh, digital divide, banking divide, unbanked sector. And then they're coming in and unfortunately they're being part of the fraud. So a company called Smile Identity, which is a KYC provider, if you don't know, KYC is know your customer. So there are certain things that customers that, uh, that bank with you or work with you should be providing. So Smile Identity reported that fraud attempts increased by 50% between the second half of 2020 and the first half of 2022. The first half of 2022 alone recorded a 30% increase compared to the same period in 2021. And in the first nine months of 2020, cyber criminals had an astounding 91% success rate from over 46,000 attempts. So I know that we all say shine our eyes. We all know that there's wickedness going around and everything. And there's literally no remorse. There were videos, I think, late last oh, year. Yes. A woman went to a bank. They cleared her yes. life savings. Gosh. But we also know that there's a regulator in this space. And that's the Central Bank of Nigeria. Uh, the last thing I saw from you recently is that the CBN has contacted you. So what are they saying? So, I mean, they're on it. Um, they are aware of the situation. I was asked to report the situation with all of the transaction evidence. That's where we are as of yesterday. So I'm at least happy and glad that, you know, this is on the peripheral of CBN and I've been given specific emails rather than info at, I have, you know, a contact and several contacts that I've been BCC'd um, into the emails that I've sent. Um, so let's see what this comes out of this. I'm not holding my breath. Mm. <laughs> I'm not 100% mm. sure that I'm going to get this money back, but I, I hope that this can be a, a sort of movement for us to ask for things to be run better. KYC is, it's important. We need to know our customers. We need, no one should be allowed to go and open an account with just the phone. Proper identification is ne needed. You can't be untraceable. What mm -hmm. is untraceable in 2024? Mm. Yes. We should be able to trace every single person that is doing these in these transactions, you know? Um, and this has really helped me to shine my eye. I'm literally <laughs> saying, what are some of the things that, you know, you need to tell people and advise people in terms of protecting yourself. And guys, we all have to take our on online protection a lot more seriously, two-factor authentication. You know, I've made sure I've now done that to all of my accounts. You mm. know, when anyone seems desperate, guys, if anyone sends you a message, even your own mom, and there's this urgency, mm -hmm. be alert. Yeah. You mm. know, my mistake here was that I didn't call. I should have just made a phone call, but I did everything on the WhatsApp chat. And that was how they were able to, to get me. And guys, they, they're going, there's something called deep fake now. They're yeah. going a bit further because they sent me a voice note of the person. They, so I, it was even more believable. They said, you know, I'm on the shower right now, but, you know, kind of send the money. So because they had hacked this person's WhatsApp, they were even able to look through all her chats and take past voice notes she sent to other people wow. and make it a conversation. This is what it is. That's where we're at, you know? Hmm. So when it's not a traditional mm -hmm. bank, when they ask you to transfer to someone else, meaning that rather than me transfer, Tolu needs yeah. money and yeah. I'm not yeah. transferring yeah. to Tolu. Tolu yeah. is telling me, please transfer to someone else. Be very, shine your eye. Be very, mm -hmm. very aware that there's a potential question mark. So Liz, you made mention of something I think we need to take up that they're using deep fakes to do all of this. But I think in some of your stories, you mentioned that uh, there's also, I don't know if it's you or somebody else, that they're going into WhatsApp groups yeah. to also they look are. for to also they look are. for victims or to mm -hmm. try people. So you're in all these random groups that people add you to at this point in yes. time. Somebody contacts you, I know you're from this group because you might have unknowingly shared something. Mm -hmm. In fact, when they even say happy birthday to you, mm -hmm. that allows them to know your birth dates. People are yeah. still using their birth dates as their PIN, yeah. as their password, as <laughs> yeah. their code. So when your birthday is out there for everything, Liz, you want to say something? Go ahead. This was the prayer group. You know, when I, because how I knew that I was being scammed for sure was I then called her. I picked up the phone and, you know, this is the perils of social media. We're so used to just doing a little chat. But when I picked up the traditional method of speaking to the person, person. that was when she goes, I've been scammed or blah, blah, blah. I've been trying wow. to tell people. You know, and I also realized in that instant, guys, that my DP, my WhatsApp DP gave a lot of a lot of information. Wow. This is my full name, you know, so they can mm. even go to my Instagram because my name is there. I immediately after this incident changed to just a picture because mm. at least just the picture, you don't know my name, you know. Mm. So mm. Uh, yeah, just so many because I had like a, I had a magazine cover. It tells you so much. I had given so much information away. You know, so it just makes us also be, you know, be, let's be wary about the amount of information we're putting about ourselves okay. online, you know, because they're just evil and wicked people. But yes, this, she told me it was from a prayer group. 
Wow. It was from a prayer wow. group. People are infiltrating prayer groups. And when they um, hack you, it's you won't suspect it. They can right. even call you uh, during prayer time and say there's a code that has been sent to you. That code that has been sent to you is actually them hacking your WhatsApp, you know? Right. They'll pretend like it's a prayer group code or, you know, oh. you're about to log on and all of this. It's 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 calculated. It's deep. I can't understand it. Yeah, it is. Wow. Very, very touching story. Catherine is in oh. shock. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> everybody has to, like, take all this information yeah, in. Yeah, very seriously. Mm -hmm. And everybody also. should just, just like Elizabeth said, you have to just ask questions and verify. Do your two-factor authentication. Verify. Okay. Do your two-factor yeah. authentication. At least make it a challenge, a challenge for yeah. them to. And I actually understand this WhatsApp group because when you're in the group, everybody can see your number. Mm -hmm. And not even us that have public faces like yes. last week somebody just sent me a random thing that uh if you will want you to do some job like um something on the map and i asked i said how did you get my number they said uh, we got it off a business profile wow. and this and that and they sent me a link that you should click. i should click on it i looked at it and i never clicked on it <laughs> and they even sent a reminder huh. that oh don't forget this is not a scam you know they would even tell you it is not a scam. They were coming for you. Anyway, we want to say a very, very big thank you to you, Elizabeth. Thank you so much. For joining us. We appreciate you sharing your story. And we will make sure that we follow up as things um, develop. And just before you go, hats off to my woman crush Wednesday. Yes, Amarachi Atama, uh, a Nigerian U.S.-based lady who's been appointed as an Igbo language lecturer in two of the country's uh, prestigious universities, Yale and Harvard. Oh, big up. Yes. I get excited every time when I read about women dominating international <laughs> spaces. And honestly, I have goose pimples already. <laughs> and she's putting our culture on, on the map. map. Yeah. Way to go, girl. We're really rooting Ooh, for you. Course. And yeah. we wish you all the very best. Yeah. And women yeah. are just... Taking up We're space. just taking up spaces. <laughs> no. women, women are not green for anybody. Honestly, we'll, big ups to you. Honestly, I love an interview with her when we can we'll work get on it. it. And even I, it reminds me of Oma Wumi Dada, the oh, uh, Nollywood yes. actress who's actually teaching a course right now about Nollywood and Nigerian filmmaking. Yes. It, those are the kind of things we like to see. Yes. But we have to run now. I want to say a very big thank you to you for watching. And also thank you to our guest, Alexander Ahigbe, for being part of the conversation on Just Siri. We also need to thank Elizabeth Osho as well yeah. uh, for sharing her situation with the online scam and of course what she's doing. I hope a lot of us have learned some lessons there because this is about information so that we ourselves don't become victims. Don't forget we'll be back at 10 a.m. West African time tomorrow so tune in for more bold conversations and remember to follow us on social media. We are at New Central TV and the hashtag is Jassiri. So ladies we are wrapping things up and we yes. look forward to seeing you on the other side of that and hopefully There'll be no fights tomorrow. No fights. We have guests. All love. You'll be on your best behavior. All love. All love. That's what well. you say today. <laughs> yes, that's what until you say I wake today. up and I see your face. <laughs>